हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन यूनिट इलेवन फेडरलिज्म एंड आवर टॉपिक इज सेलियंट फीचर्स ऑफ इंडियन फेडरलिज्म द यूनियन टाइप फेडरल पॉलिटी प्रीस्पोजेस द एसेंशियल बैलेंसिंग ऑफ टू इनहेरिएंट टेंडेंसीज नेमली यूनियनाइजेशन and regionalization the unionization process allows indian federalism to assume unitarian features properly referred to as centralized federalism when there is a perceived threat internal or external to the maintenance of national unity integrity and territorial sovereignty of india on the one hand and the maintenance of constitutional political order in the states on the other however unions prerogative of perception and definition of threat is not absolute this is subject to review by the apex court this has become evidently clear from the supreme court's ruling in the sr bombay case it is only in the abnormal times as the spirit of the emergency provision suggests that the indian federalism assumes the characteristics of a unitarian polity however more than this the unionization process constitutionally bestows upon the union government with added responsibility of securing balanced economic growth and social change across the regions and social segments through means and measures of mixed economy and state regulated welfare planning in this and the year the constitution and which raises the role of the states as coordinating partners to the union government beyond this the unionization process has no more political meaning and relevance along with the unionization principles the constitution of india also recognizes regionalism and regionalization as valid principles of nation building and state formation a close scrutiny of the constitutional provisions reveals that the constitution of india acknowledges and recommends the formation of a multi level or multi layered federation which multiple modes of power distribution the multi layered federation may consist of a union the states the sub states institutional arrangements like regional development or autonomous councils and the units of local self government at the lower levels while the union and the state constitute the federal superstructure the remaining two constitutes the federal substructure each level has constitutionally specified federal functions which they perform almost independently of each other however the superstructure exercises certain fiscal and political control over the substructures governmental funds to the substructure are released by the two superstructures many of the decisions of the regional councils are subjected to the approval by the concerned states as a matter of fact the constitution of india promotes both the symmetrical and the asymmetrical distribution of competence this variegated system 
first lays down the general principle of power distribution having symmetrical application to all states of the union. Then there is provision for special distribution of competence and power sharing arrangements between the union and the selected states. There are many provisions like article 370, 371, 371A to H, 5th and 6th schedules which allow all for a special type of union state relations. To put substantially such these provisions restrict the application of many union laws, delimit the territorial extent of the application of the parliamentary acts having bearing upon the law making power of parliament and the consent states legislatures and bestows upon the office of governor with special powers and responsibility in some states like Arunachal Pradesh, Sikkim, Assam, Manipur, Nagaland, Jammu Kashmir, Maharashtra and Gujarat. If we closely examine the above mentioned constitutional provisions it appears that the federalism in India has been fine-tuned to accommodate ethnic diversity and ethnic demands like application of customary law in the administration of civil and criminal justice, etc. It is for the reasons of accommodating ethnic features in the formation of polities that the constitution permits for the ethnic self-governance through specially created institutions like autonomous regional or district self-governance through specially created institutions like autonomous regional or district councils. A few dozen such councils exist in the northeast regions and other parts of the India. These councils seek to protect and promote the indigenous identity and development. At the fourth level exist the units of local self-governance with the passage of 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment acts. The constitution of India further federalizes its powers and authority at the village and municipal levels. The Panchayati Raj institutions PRIs are mainly developmental in functioning. Constituted through the direct election, the panchayas and municipal bodies are expected to build infrastructure of development like road, transport, etc. Build the and maintain community assets promote agricultural development through management and control of minor irrigation and water management, soil conservation and land improvement. Promote social for forestry and animal husbandry, dairy and poultry. Promote the development of village industry and manage and control of education and health at the local level in nutshell. The PRIs are institutions of empowering people for self-government. From the federal point of view, the relationship between the PRIs, the state and the center exists on the one-to-one -one basis. While many of the developmental schemes of the center are implemented by the panchayas without any interference by the state, the state government allocates a certain percentage of its development plans and budget to the panchayas. What has been shown above is the fact that the union type federalism of India essentially functions on the basis of territorial decentralization 
which combines both the center periphery and non centralization model of federalism. If federalism in India deviates from the classical reference to American federalism, it is only for the purpose of the accommodating diversity and to serve its national interest, but in no way it alters the participatory features of the federal governance. It is because of its being multilayered that one finds both the symmetrical and asymmetrical systems of power distribution. Now let us wind up the session and take rest. Thank you very much for engaging yourself with a self-learning podcast.